When we speak about the Wahhabis, and we speak about their creed, and we say that they are the people of, uh, of, of Tajseem, that they are from the Mujassima sect. A lot of the Wahhabis, they will rush forth and say, no, 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 you're lying on us. Show us where we say this. Show us where we say that we are Mujassima. They don't call themselves Mujassima, but their belief is the belief of the Mujassima because they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a spatial entity. Now among their beliefs, is that they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, located above the arsh. This is a book I have here. Uh, it's called The Muslim's Belief by, they call him, Shaykh Muhammad al-Salih al-Uthaymeen. Al-Uthaymeen was one of the most notorious of the Wahhabis. He said, this is what's in his book on page 11. He says, we believe that he, meaning Allah, he claims that Allah created the heavens and earth in six periods, six days, periods here, not six 24-hour days. In six periods, then he settled himself on the throne, the arsh, the ceiling of paradise. And then he goes on to say that he, meaning Allah, that Allah is sitting in person on his throne. This is, this is their words. He is sitting in person on his throne. This is what they say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is clear that these people, they have a, a creed. If we, if we are sincere and we want to expose the Wahhabis, Take it back to what they say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you can make it clear as day that what they are saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blasphemy. And what they are saying is itself, even from the, own, the, the statements of the Wahhabis themselves, they, con they consistently contradict themselves regarding, regarding what they say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a person who is sincere, he sees these people and they are saying things about Allah which, are, which lead to explicit or implicit uh, tashbih that they are actually, which is explicit. In reality, it is explicit tashbih, but they don't claim to resemble Allah to the creations. This person here, this Uthaymin, he says Allah is sitting in person upon the throne, the arsh, the ceiling of paradise. Now some of the Wahhabis, they disagree, they say Allah is, is suspended above the, the arsh, but not upon the arsh. But Uthaymin, one of their leaders, says he is sitting in person upon the arsh. This is a Wahhabi belief. So when we want to expose these people, we expose them on the creed. Let's mention something, inshaAllah. The Wahhabis, they misconstrue this word, the, the, or the ulu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understand the ulu of Allah to be in the literal directional sense. They understand that Allah is most high in a literal directional sense. Although at the Hawi, he said that Allah Ta'ala is, is clear of all six directions. Allah is not an object. We define what the direction is, the comparison of one, one object, uh, the location of one object in relation to the location of another object. Allah is not, a, not an object, Allah created location, is not in a location, therefore Allah Ta'ala is not in a direction. The, the ulu, the highness, if one takes it literally, the highness of Allah does not refer to direction, it refers to status. Even in English, even in English, people in the British, in Britain, they would say, they would refer to the king as your royal Highness, and they did not understand that the king was situated in the highest location in the kingdom. What they understood from that in their society, that the king had the highest social status. When we say about Allah, ta Allah Ta'ala, when we say Allah Ta'ala, we do not mean Allah is situated in the highest location but rather that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gloriously clear of all similarity and need of the creation, that Allah ta'ala is al-Quddus, that He is holy and pure from any created characteristics.
being in a direction and a dimension, are certainly created characteristics. So we have one statement where they're claiming that Allah Ta'ala is sitting in person. Also in the same book of this book of Uthaymeen, in the very same book, we mentioned on page 11, on page 13, the author, he says, we believe that Allah has a glorified and dignified face. They believe Allah Ta'ala has a face. They believe that Allah has a face. And they say it literally. They don't mean face, but we don't know what it means. They say a literal face. They say a literal face. Now when a Muslim tells them, well, face is the, first, the front part of the head, he says, oh, but not like that. But if you take the word face literally, it means the front part of the head. You cannot say Allah has a literal face, a literal front part of the head, but it is not a literal front part of the head. What is this? This is gibberish. This is how the Wahhabi talks. In reality, what is he believing? He's believing Allah is a spatial entity. <coughs> this is his belief. He believes that Allah Ta'ala has size and dimensions. He, they believe Allah Ta'ala has a, a literal face, but it's not identical to our face. The wajh. The, the wajh of Allah Ta'ala, if you look in any Arabic dictionary, any major Arabic dictionary, you will see a multitude of meanings for the term wajh. Wajh, in reference to Allah, it can mean the dominion, as Al-Bukhari mentioned. The wajh can mean, in certain cases, the qibla, the direction of the prayer. So the, the word wajh, it does not only mean the front part of the head. The Wahhabi, he sees the word wajh, he knows from Arabic 101 that the word wajh means face, the one, one of the meanings. And then he takes that meaning of face and he insists that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a real, actual face, something with dimensions. And, and this is the essence of tajseem, the essence of resembling Allah ta'ala, believing that Allah ta'ala has body parts. Also, Uthaymeen, he says, we believe that Allah has two generous hands. So Muslims, we believe in قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ That Allah Ta'ala is one with no partner, no one is the creator except Allah. Allah is one in that He is unique, there is nothing like Allah. And Allah Ta'ala is one in that He is not, he's not composed of jizah, of parts, dimensions. Two hands, so now they're saying Allah has two separate hands. The word yad in Arabic has a multitude of meanings, like the word hand in English has a multitude of meanings, like power, control, both in Arabic and in English. That the Wahhabis, they say, no, 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 no. We can't say Allah's, the, 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 Allah's attribute, this word yad, we don't say it means power or control. We mean that it has literal hands. This is the belief of the Wahhabis. The Wahhabis say they misconstrue and distort uh, the teachings of Islam and they say the whole earth will be Allah's handful on the day of resurrection. So apparently Allah's hand according to the Wahhabis isn't that big because the earth fills it. And then they say and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. They also say we believe that Allah possesses two real eyes. They say, they say real. Two real eyes. And then they try to justify this by twisting and distorting the ayahs of the Qur'an. This is the Wahhabi methodology. When we learn the proper belief, we see that in reality that the Wahhabis, they start with this assumption that Allah Ta'ala is an object. And then they have built their aqidah, their doctrine, around this misconception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an object. In another book here, it's called Islam in Brief by a character named Mahmoud Murad. Again, similarly, they say he, meaning Allah, is above the seven heavens mounting his throne. And then they add, they try to cover that up by saying, in the manner uh, which suits his grandeur. The scholars of Islam, they say, Allahu mawjudun bila kayf. They say Allah exists 
bila kayf, without kayfiya, without manner or modality, without manner of being or modality. They did not say bila, bila kayf, they did not say without asking how, they said without a how, without a manner of being, without a modality. Not without, we don't know the modality, but that this notion of kayfiya or kayf is, is, is inapplicable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Th this is some of their belief. Other statements from these people in their books. This is from what they call the, ex the, the explanation of sufficiency in creed. In one place, the, now the Wahhabis, they have multiple absurdities in their belief. One, they claim of the ayah ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, they believe that Allah Ta'ala went from being located beneath the Arsh, the ceiling of paradise. They believe he went from being beneath it and then he rose above the ceiling of paradise. And as you saw from these two books, they believe he mounted himself or sat himself in person upon the Arsh, the ceiling of paradise. Or others, they will say that he is, he's not contacting the Arsh, but he's suspended above it. This is the belief of the Wahhabis. Now, in this book, to show you, again, these people believe in Tajseem. They do not believe in Allah. They believe in an object. When they go to deen, when they go through the acts of the salah, of the prayer, they are not worshipping Allah. They are worshipping a figment of their imagination. Uh, of their imagination. Imam Abu Bakr, as siddiq the first of the Khalifas, he said, Al Ajzu an Daraki Idiraki Iraku Wal Bahthu an Datihi Kufrun wa Ishraku. He said that knowing you are incapable of imagining Allah is knowledge in itself. And attempting to fathom the reality of Allah is 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 shirk associating partners with Allah and blasphemy. This, this is our belief. So the, the Muslims, we understand that, that forms, shapes, dimensions, these are applicable to things that can be potentially imagined. Allah Ta'ala does not have a form, a shape, or a dimension. Look at what these people, they say here in this book. They say the kursi, this is a creation in the upper world. He says the kursi is separate from the arsh, since the arsh is what Allah rose over, while the kursi is the place for his feet. This is from their book. So they're saying part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the arsh, and another part is beneath the arsh, because the kursi is beneath the arsh, it's situated beneath the arsh. So part of Allah, wa ya'adhu billahi ta'ala, part of Allah, according to them, is above the arsh, but his feet are or I presumably his legs are dangling over the arsh with his feet on the kursi. Because they attribute to Allah a, 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 they attribute to Allah two feet and one shin. They are calling people to worship a hideous deformed monstrosity. This is the Aqidah of the Wahhabiya. When you see it in their books, when you learn the right Aqidah, at the how we said Allah is clear of all body parts. At the how we said the creed of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, the creed of Abu Abu Hanifa, that Allah Taala is clear of all jismiya and all body parts. These people insist on saying that Allah Taala has a pair of feet. Other elsewhere, they misconstrue a hadith of the Prophet and they say Allah Taala will put his foot inside a hellfire. This is the belief of the Wahhabis. The Wahhabis, and this is who they are, so-called Salafis so-called Salafis. These Wahhabis, they will often, when we mention their creed, they will challenge us, say, where do we say that? Where do we say that? We don't say that. We don't say that. You're lying on us. We are referencing their books. We are referencing their books. The creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is, is rationally consistent. When we say that, they say, oh, we don't indulge in philosophy. To, to demonstrate that the creed of the Prophet وسلم, does not contradict itself is not philosophy. It is using the mind that Allah Ta'ala gave us this faculty of reason so we could distinguish truth from falsehood. 
How else will we know truth from falsehood if we don't use our minds? You have two groups of people claiming to be Muslim in this case. One believes that Allah Ta'ala has body parts, organs, limbs, part of, part of himself allegedly is above, above the arsh, another part is, is, is on the kursi. So you have people who say that. And you have another group of people who say that the Creator revealed in the Quran that Allah Ta'ala does that Allah does not resemble anything whatsoever. Allah is beyond what we can imagine. The Creator does not have a size, shaped uh, uh, dimensions, composition. That that the Creator of space and place is not in space and place. That this fits with the mind. So how do we know which one is right and which one is wrong? We use our minds. The Wahhabis will claim to quote the Qur'an, and we, of course, claim to quote the Qur'an. How are you going to know whose interpretation is right if you don't use your mind? The Wahhabis say we take these verses literally, and then they run into contradiction after contradiction. Let's show a couple of more, inshallah. We mentioned the saying, this is from a book they call the Muslim Creed, which is the Creed of At-Tahawi. They produce their own twisted, distorted, uh, misinterpretation of the creed of at tahawi We mentioned the saying of at tahawi that Allah Ta'ala is clear of all boundaries, extremities, sides, organs, instruments, uh, appendages, and none of the six directions contain Allah, as is the case with all the originated beings. This statement disturbs the Wahhabis greatly because they, they themselves know at tahawi is one of the authorities of Ahna Sunnah. They can't get around that. So, and they have this statement which is, is not is more than a thorn, it's, it's a log in their eyes. They can't get around this statement, so all they can do is try to twist it, distort it, and explain it away. So what do they say about this statement of at the how that Allah is clear of the boundaries and clear of, of, of the directions? They claim that this, this phrase can be exploited at face value by those who are, who are obsessed with twisting the meanings. They, at the how he, he knew Arabic. He could express himself well. He expressed himself as Muslims understand, as Abu Hanifa and Ahl Sunnah agree, that Allah Ta'ala does not have body parts and is not in a direction. He says here, because he has to explain this, he says, by hudud, the hudud, the, hudud, the extremities, the limits. He says, by limits, by hudud, the author means such is known by humans, since no one except Allah knows his limits. Now here, so they believe Allah has limits, a size, dimensions, but only Allah knows his size and dimensions. What is this other than object worship? Recently, I had a discussion with a Wahhabi in which I was saying what we say, what Muslims say. The Wahhabis are a mujassima. They believe that Allah Ta'ala is an object. The Wahhabis believe Allah is a spatial entity. And this guy, he kept on saying, no, 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 you're lying on us, you're lying on us. And then he turned around and said that Allah has a physical presence. This was, these were his words. He said Allah has a physical presence above the arsh. I said that that's exactly what we're saying. The, Mus the, the, the Wahhabis believe that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has size and dimensions and composition, parts in one place, other parts in another place, and this is the, the essence of, uh, of tajseem and object worship. Another statement from this character. Uh, he says, he quotes the saying of at tahawi about the directions. He says, the six directions do not surround him, meaning Allah, like all the innovations. Here they mean the originated things. And then he adds this statement. He said, it means the six created directions as if there are directions that are not created this is this is what he means that he's claiming that Allah Ta'ala exists in an uncreated direction this when if, if, if we are sincere and we want to expose these Wahhabis expose them on the fundamentals of the Creed when you expose them on the fundamentals of the Creed about Tenzi then it becomes very clear these guys are contradicting themselves he adds something here. He says, uh, his, uh, he says, Allah does not, uh, he, meaning he's claiming at tahawi does not mean the negation of Allah being above his creation and established on his throne. So he's saying Allah is above, it, of, above the creation and established on the creation because his, Allah's position is not covered by the six directions. 
So he said, Allah is above. He just said that Allah Ta'ala is above. Above is a direction. Above is a direction. He said Allah is above, but then he says that Allah is not in a direction. What is this other than a contradiction? And then he adds insult to injury. He says, Allah is above the universe and surrounding it. This is a person's mind on Wahhabism. If Allah Ta'ala is, according to them, above and surrounds, then that would mean that parts, because he's talking about parts now. He's, he's talking about parts. He's saying part of Allah is above the universe, above the creation, and he's saying other parts are, at, are beneath the creation and at other extremities of the creation. This is the belief of the Wahhabis. This is why we have to expose them and warn the public against them. Their, their terrorism, their mass slaughter, if you want to understand the essence of it, it goes back to how they warp and distort the, the, the sayings of the Qur'an, the, 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 the revelation of the Qur'an, and the sayings of the Prophet. They are literalists who, they read the Qur'an and they read the sayings of the Prophet, but they don't use their minds. They will tell you we don't use, they will say in, their, in these words, we do not use our minds. This, when you have someone who does not use his mind, and he is reading the, the Qur'an, or as in other traditions, reading other uh, religious books, and he does not use his mind, it is going to lead to fanaticism. It's going to lead to extremism. Other statements from these people. To show you, we, we, this is from their master, meaning the one that they call Shaykh of Islam, as it says right here, Shaykh, Shaykh of Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah is the ideological forefather of the Wahhabis. And this man... He was a deviant who died in prison. He was in the, the scholars of the four madhahib. They wrote a, a fatwa, a, 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 an Islamic verdict against him, and he was imprisoned in, until he died. He was in prison multiple times, but he died in prison because of various deviant things he was saying in the fundamentals of the creed and also in the matters of the fiqh in the matters of Islamic jurisprudence. So among the things that this person in this book, this person again, similarly, they say that Allah is above the entire creation. This is a belief of them. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said about Allah, he was making dua, he said, Anta dhahiru falaysa fawqaka shayt. You are a Zahir, the one whose existence is evident, meaning the creation, it's a proof for God's existence. He said, you are a Zahir and there's nothing above you. And then he said, وَأَنْتَ الْبَاطِنُ فَلَيْسَ دُونَكَ شَيْءٍ And you are al batin and there's nothing beneath you. And al bayhaqi one of the scholars that the Wahhabis, they quote, but they won't tell you what he said. They will, they will quote certain things and then hide other things. al bayhaqi said that the scholars, the Ahlul Sunnah, they use that hadith to, to prove that Allah exists without a place. Since there's nothing above and there's nothing beneath Allah, Allah is not in a, in a place or a direction. This is the belief of the Muslims. So these people, they have a chapter here, uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, and these Wahhabis and their translators. They have a chapter, they claim, they say the affirmation of the face, the eyes, and the hands for Allah. This is their belief. This is their belief. They, they, they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a body. In another chapter on page 135, they say they have a section they call the affirmation of the foot and the step for Allah. This is what we just mentioned. So it's very clear that in their books, they, they, they are consistent in contradicting themselves. They say Allah is above the creations, and then they say He surrounds the creations. One of the, the, the Wahhabis, I saw one of them, they said that Allah is above the, the creation and has always been above the creation and always will be above the creation. But then in their books, they say Allah rose above the creations. And then in their books, they say, late at night, in the last third of the night, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends physically, literally, descends to the first heaven. And so now, 
we know as Muslims that Jesus السلام, is in the second heaven. The Muslims believe Jesus is in the second heaven and will return before the day of judgment. The Wahhabis say that Allah descends to the first heaven. So in, at, in the last third of the night. So here you have them and they are saying contradiction on top of contradiction. They say Allah is above the creations, always has been, always will be above the creations. But then they say He rose above the creations and then at night they say He goes beneath a, a, large, uh, a large portion of the creation. What is this? And, and, and to, to show this in their own words. Again, we don't, there's no need to lie about them because they will claim that we lie on them. We are quoting their books as they are. And we are showing the contradictions in their statements. And their response to us, when we quote what they say, they'll say, well, this is philosophy. That, that, that using rational proofs to demonstrate the absurdity of their claims, because their claims are absurd, they're self, they are self-contradictory, to, to, to point out their self their, their self contradictions, they will say that this is philosophy. Because they know when all is said and done, their aqidah, their creed makes no sense. And all they can call people to is ignorance and blindness and fanaticism. This is the essence of Wahhabism. But going back about this, about this alleged uh, arising and descending. He says here, and this is a book, again, another version of uh, Distortion of the Creed of At-Tahawi. And this is also in the section in which At-Tahawi, he mentions that Allah Ta'ala is clear of the six directions. And again, this statement d disturbs them with, with, to no end, so to speak. He says here, the ignorant suffer various distortions in the meaning in the meaning, when we're talking about Allah Ta'ala being without direction, because they're trying to grapple with this statement. It's, they say, especially when things such as Allah coming down to the earth's firmament. Firmament, they mean the first heaven. So they believe Allah comes down to the first heaven. So he says, uh, uh, the ignorant suffer various distortions in the meaning, especially when things such as Allah coming down to the earth's firmament every night are spoken of. They imagine that when Allah descends, as informed, he claims by, as informed by the Prophet, then the Arsh is above him, and that, and that he is then confined between the two heavens. So they are claiming Allah Ta'ala descends to the first heaven, but the Arsh is still above the seven heavens and above paradise. So they're claiming Allah Ta'ala is down in the first heaven beneath Jesus, but at the same time, he's not, he's still above the arsh. This, this, is, this is the Wahhabi belief. One Wahhabi said to me recently when this was said to him about how this doesn't add up. That, that they claim Allah Ta'ala is situated above the arsh and then in the last third of the night he's, he's beneath uh, Prophet Jesus and inside the first heaven. This Wahhabi said to me, it does not mean that all of Allah goes leaves the ark uh, uh, that all he said that not all of Allah goes down from the arsh into the first heaven so again they believe Allah Ta'ala is of, of parts and pieces also of course if you think we all we know that there are things we use what are called time zones it is always the last third of the night someplace on earth so what 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 are what have going to say to this that Allah allegedly is going up and down up and down up and down up and down through every 24-hour period. The, the, their belief is full of contradictions, and what we mentioned here is, is just a small sample. So be aware of these people, such as Ibn Baz or Bin Baz, Al-Albani, Uthaymin, whom we've quoted, and also Al -Al uh, we quoted um, uh, Uthaymin, we quoted Bin Baz, uh, these people, also Bilal Phillips, Zakir Naik, uh, the so-called Sheikh Fez, who's in Australia, uh, Yusuf Estes. These are all people who are promulgating, who are promoting the Wahhabi ideology. They are attributing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala size and dimensions and such a creed is contrary to the teachings of Islam. They, they come to this creed because they misconstrue, they warp and they, and they distort the verses of the Qur'an and the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They take words like Wajah, like Ain, like Istiwa. They take these words which have multiple meanings in the Arabic language. 
Some of those meanings are befitting of Allah. Some of those meanings are not befitting of Allah. They take the literal and non-befitting meanings and they ascribe them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they accuse us, meaning the Sunnis, they accuse us of denying Allah's attributes. Because we say Allah ta'ala's wajah is affirmed to him but not a literal face. They say because we deny that Allah has a literal face that we deny the attribute of Allah. When we affirm that Allah has a wajah and the wajah of Allah ta'ala is not something of body parts and dimensions. The wajah of Allah can mean for example the dominion which is befitting of Allah ta'ala. They say they accuse us, they say that we are denying the attributes of Allah. So let's finish this insha'Allah. How do we uh, counter this madness? And it's not likely to get better unless real Sunnis stand up and they warn the public and they educate the public about the Wahhabi ideology. One is we can identify them because they engage in certain rhetoric. If you hear people going on and on about bid'ah, about innovation, saying that every innovation, meaning categorically without any exception, every innovation, innovation is uh, misguidance. This is a strong sign that this person is a Wahhabi. The, the hadith which mentions about the bid'ah, kullu bid'atin dolala, it means the majority, most of the innovations are innovations of misguidance. It does not mean absolutely categorically with no exception Anything that was not done by the Prophet himself وسلم, is an innovation of misguidance. So if you hear people going on and on about innovations, there is a strong chance that this person is a Wahhabi. If you hear people going around claiming that the Muslims are mushriks, and in particular they like to use the phrase grave worshippers, this is a very strong chance that this person is a Wahhabi. Now this issue of Tawassal and Tabarruq, uh, we will, inshallah, do this in a separate lesson. Because this is really the thing that the Wahhabis use to, to deem the Muslim masses and the scholars of Ahl Sunnah to deem them to be pagans and, and, and idol worshippers. They claim that visiting the graves of the awliya and the anbiya or uh, the prophets and the ultra-righteous, they claim that this is worship. It's not worship. And believing that one can benefit from the blessed tra tracings to make tabarruq to benefit from the blessed tracings with the Muslim conviction of Allah Ta'ala as the creator of the blessings and the benefit and the harm that they say believing that you can benefit from that which Allah Ta'ala has created blessings in they claim that this is worship and that you commit uh, shirk as a result this is the belief of the Wahhabis so this is and this is the belief that they use to justify in their minds the mass uh, making of takfir against the Muslims also, the Wahhabis, they regard uh, Ahmed ibn Taymiyyah, uh, who we mentioned earlier, the character who died in prison. He was a man of knowledge, but he was a man of deviance. He wasn't an ignorant person, but he was a deviant person. That They claim that ibn Taymiyyah and Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab were the, among the greatest scholars of the nation of Prophet Muhammad.